Welcome back to Love, Lies, and Lace Friends, where we do reactions, reviews, and commentary on the YouTube channels you love to watch. Guys, are you subscribed to this channel? If you're not, you need to be. Hit your notification bell so you can be notified when I upload a video, when I go live and drop another video for you. Also, follow me on Instagram. That way you can keep up with what I'm doing, okay? If you enjoy channels like this and commentary, consider becoming a member. Otherwise, guys, bougie gang gang, it's an open thing. Make sure that you are subscribed to this channel so you can participate in the chats. And I will see you next time I hit that live button. Okay, take care. Bye. Hey guys, how are you? Bitch, you could be doing a post of being on my page, bitch, because I ain't got nothing for you, nothing ass bitches. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh no, could you guys not hear me this whole time? Oh my goodness, hold on. Oh my goodness, no sound. My bad guys, I've been talking this whole time. Wow, okay, well, I think we're good now, right? Oh, I'm mad. Okay, you guys can hear me now, cause I can see, okay. My bad guys, okay, just, um, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I spent the last couple minutes with no sound. Um, my bad, guys. I thought the sound was going. Um, good evening. Well, let me say hello to everyone all over again. Let me let this. Let me get this thing started one more time. To my gang stars. Good evening, Queen K, Nicole, and um, Kim Nation. Thank you for coming through first. Absolutely, Cheyenne. How are you, my dear Victoria? Uh, lover. Wait, love of, let me see, lover or love of all things beautiful. Hello. Hi, V. What's going on? Uh, walk by faith, not by sight. How are you, my dear? Juice, what's up? Miss SWV, what's going on? Guys, I hate when I do that. I was talking my ass off, quite literally. Um, Sharice, what's good, boo-boo? Hello. Um, I wasn't looking at the chat, so my bad. Um, let me go through the poll again, too. That was a complete oversight. My bad, guys. I did not realize that I had my mute on. So my bad, sisses. Okay. Um, girl, we fall down. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Ain't nobody stopping this show. We we getting ready to press on. Okay. We are not playing tonight. We getting ready to get into the shits and the shenanigans and be a little bit extra petty okay it's okay all right okay virgo doll what's going on yes mastermind yes tina lachey yes am i is it amaya with a silent l yes okay you guys couldn't hear me i'm sorry boo-boos i'm so sorry um chanel dior hey boo-boo yes girl in the bushes yes ma'am Okay, all my ladies, what's up? Okay, guys, if I didn't speak to you, my bad, sis. I didn't mean to. Nicole, what's going on, honey? Everybody, I, if I missed you, it's because I missed you. I didn't. It's I don't mean any. D. Rut, what's going on, hun? J. Nicole, I girl, I see a whole lot of people now. Fab Five, what's good, guys? Your girl made a rookie mistake. Max, girl, I made a rookie mistake. Girl, I was on. I was on uh, mute. It, look, it happens to the best of us. Okay. Shit happens, okay? Um, but we're good now, right? We getting ready to get all, into all of these shenanigans. Somebody was trying to send, clearly somebody was sending some bad mojo my way because they didn't want me to run this yapper tonight and talk about all their business. Okay, let's get into it. Let me rewind because um, number one, um, first on the docket, housekeeping item, Martin Lewis, we need for you to get up on your job, sir. We need for you to go ahead and get up off of this Chris Sales uh, stuff. And can you get back to work on the Keisha collab, please? Um, let me, let's see what's going on over there. And we're going to talk about the um, the poll, okay? So I hate when I do that. It just to it totally throws me off, but it's okay. I'm a, I'm a pro at this, so I'm going to keep it pushing. Okay, Martin Lewis, what is going on, sir? Why in the world are we coming over to your place and seeing this this uh nobody cares is is chris so does he even go here still like what is going on we haven't seen a post from you in over two weeks on keisha and you said you finished up the britney interview so sir we gonna need for you to get back on your job sir we are waiting for the next installment okay okay that's number one also Hmm. Well, no, let me not do that. Um, how can I get there from here? Okay, let's do this. Let's look at the poll. Hold on. Let's look at what's going on with the poll. How's everybody doing? Happy Saturday night. Okay. Um, okay. 
है All right, you guys can see this. We're going to look at the poll really quick. Okay, the collab, guys. Can you see this? Let's see. I hope that this is this is weird looking at this like this. Oh, this is probably not the best thing to do. It looks weird, but can let me see how this looks on. Okay, you guys see what I'm doing though. This is weird. Um, it's interesting though. It's like never nonstop. Uh okay, let's get through this fast. Which will end first? Is it going to be the collab, the friendship, the glow up, or the Martin Lewis series? The funny thing was that when I went live initially. It was 23% across the board, the collab, the collab. <coughs> Sorry, y'all. Um, my dog just got like all up in my face and it literally blew me away. Her breath was so bad. Um, I was like, damn, that just almost took me out. Um, my dog is 15, girl. Anyway, um, the collab, the friendship, the glow up, or the Martin Lewis series. So right now, we've had 141 votes. And right now, um, in third place, basically, is the collab in general, them actually working together. Um, and the Martin Lewis series. So those should end simultaneously according to you guys at this moment girl that breath was just it was breath with two f's okay <laughs> i was just like mommy it took my breath away like she came over and was breathing on me and it went up my nose and it literally almost took me out um <laughs> um so the martin lewis series might end i mean because this thing is carrying on <coughs> Um, the glow up mentorship program. I just think it sounds very cheesy. I'm not trying to, I'm not being a hater guys. It sounds very cheesy and, um, I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Um, and the friendship. So this is kind of a little bit <clears throat> of the order that we're going to talk about things this evening. Jayla was better making, making up with the bad How about Missy? Um, her and Missy had a good thing going, I thought, but she fucked that up. Anyway, let me stop sharing the screen because it looks weird. <clears throat> anyway, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Saturday night. Sorry about that mishap. I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of people falling in the next little bit like, oh, my God, I can't hear the sound. What's going on? Fake friendship. Look, that was weird to me, okay? All right, let me make sure I covered everything that I talked about while I was on mute. Um, the poll, so keep voting. Anybody that comes in, go ahead and vote, 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 vote. Get those votes in so we can talk about it. Um, also, the Martin Lewis, we need you to get back on your job, sir. You owe us episode three. I know you're working on it, but we need you to get on your job, sir. Um, go ahead and get back on your job and get out episode three. We see you reporting over there on Chris Sales and nobody cares. I don't know who still cares about Chris sales, but those views are lower than the views on the Keisha videos. So that's girl, that's next to nobody cares. Okay. At least in the, in the realm of the people that follow you. I mean, it's very, very low. Um, doesn't seem like anybody's tapping in on that topic. So anyway, the ladies, we talked about it last week, guys, this video was so funny. If you did not see this video last week, we talked about um, the fact that they had been getting together, right? We saw the ladies getting together. We didn't really know what was happening. Can can we talk about Keisha's outfit really quick? I'm not trying to be funny, but what is going on with this outfit here? What is going on with these pants with the sag in the front? Does that make sense? Is that a new fashion thing to wear saggy front pants? Like, are those pants that she maybe needed like an extra small and she found a medium and she just wanted to wear them anyway? Um, I just don't get it because I don't understand how leggings can fit so big. 
I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. That's not fashion. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay. Looks like pajamas. Do you wear a cutout side um, bodysuit pajamas like that? Maybe some of y'all do. I'm sure some of y'all try to find like, wait, who? Chris Sales. Yes. What is Martin doing with Chris Sales? Like he's doing some sort of um, series on Chris Sales girlfriend exposing him I, I don't know what's going on girls some some nonsense anyway um yeah martin lewis needs to just get back and finish up this keisha series because you promised it we like to talk about it so go ahead and deliver sir because you know you're gonna get some you're gonna get some views i don't know if you're gonna get everything now i also heard that the sh the comment section over to jayla's is in shambles so if we have enough time we're gonna head over there but i want to talk about this story babe do you mind giving some crushed ice and some water. Mommy came and took me out. She came and breathed in my face and took me out. <laughs> Y'all always had to ask my husband for some water. <clears throat> okay, how how are you going to mentor these young ladies when you can't even keep a faithful, true, committed relationship on friends and mates? Well, thank God the classes are not about relationships, okay? Guys, do you remember when Keisha started to try to talk about ultimatum? Guys, we're going to have to meet up again and talk about Ultimatum because I got all the way up into it like a couple days ago and I've been watching the episodes. Keisha, if Ke Keisha, <laughs> Keisha, if you're out here watching this or someone who likes to drag bones back, Keisha, don't you not go near that show Ultimatum because you are going to leave by the second episode crying. First of all, you're not going to be able to handle seeing Jeremy in your face pretend like he barely even knows you talking to other women okay because if you guys have been watching ultimatum on netflix keisha was trying to talk about ultimatum and she had only seen one episode girl by the time you get to episode episode three girl you're gonna be calling and trying to get some some damn uh anti-anxiety pills because you would not be able to handle it these girls are having damn near nervous breakdowns just one second guys Didn't we just do that? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if any of y'all are watching that. Make, can you make sure back door is closed? Okay. Sorry, guys. Life is happening in my house, okay? Um, with no John. So, yeah. Um, thankfully, so to your point, um, thank God it's not relationship classes. She couldn't do that, girl. Uh-uh. Let me see. Okay, but we're going to talk about everything, okay? So I should probably make myself a list. But hey, Amber. Hey, girl. Hey, boo-boo. Hi, Nicole. Hi, your spoiltness. Hello, everyone. Happy Saturday night. This is so much fun. Guys, Um, all any of you out there are like, oh, my God, is she going to talk about Mercy Gono? Look, I'm going to have to do a whole separate live for that lady. That lady is on some new, some new, new crazy stuff. And we're going to talk about that separate. So we will talk about Mercy Gono. If I don't come back with some sort of like mini something later, um, but I got to spend time with my family also. But when we finish up this topic, if I can, I will. If not, we will cover Mercy in the morning. So if you're of the Mercy crew and you want to talk about the Liberian swindler and all these beautiful Coco Liberians who are acting a fool on this YouTube down in Atlanta. We are going to talk about that, but we're going to talk about that not now. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Everybody is, see, I made a mistake by not doing this in my office. Everybody keeps coming through. Poor, okay. Yes, please. Ferret, stay. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> okay, y'all. Hey, Tiffy. It's like, I'm working, guys. I'm working. I'm talking to my friends about our fun topic. Okay, Amber Heard. Girl, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Girl, we, we'll just have to do a catch-all tomorrow. A catch-all on all topics other than the ratchet mommies that we talk about, okay? I'm open to talk about anything tomorrow other than anybody who has been, anyone that I've talked about, recently not excluding mercy gono we're gonna we're gonna cover keisha 
and uh, Jayla tonight where we'll be good for a minute, okay? Um, okay, let's get into this, okay? So what we do know is this. So Jayla and Keisha have been meeting up and trying to allude to some sort of collaboration for a couple weeks now, right? They've been meeting up here and there. Um, it was funny because when when uh, when homie, when uh, Jeremy and Keisha did their little collab the other day when they were eating, I don't know if it was this one or the one where they were talking about Riccocato, and he was asking her, how did it feel to be over at the old apartment? You and Jayla have not been hanging out. When you went over to Jayla's apartment recently, that was the first time you'd even been over there. And the funny thing is, is that she was living in the building. She was living in the building before you left and you didn't speak to her then. How are you going to come and play in our faces and tell us that it wasn't that serious? You allegedly have your good good living in the building and you haven't even spoken to her and this was the first time you were in her more beautiful than yours apartment with the floor to ceiling panoramic view excuse me you hadn't even been in her place but now you two are trying to convince us that it wasn't not nothing between you two you're going with daddy Okay, make sure the back door is locked. Okay, I'm just saying, that's, can we just start off, since y'all y'all came, y'all wanted to hear my opinion, I want to hear y'all's opinion too, but what I'm saying is this, you lived in the old apartment, Jayla lived in the old apartment, for those of you who did not know, Jayla moved into the same building with Keisha, not for any reason, not for nothing, as we would say up in New York and New Jersey, not for nothing, but just for, that's where she moved, right? happens to be in Keisha's old building, but you hadn't even been in her apartment. You'd never seen her apartment. You never met Harlem. You've never, I mean, y'all hadn't spoke, but now you want us to believe that you guys are, now do people need to be best friends to do business? Do people need to be best friends to make lots of money? Do people need to do, be best friends to collab? Absolutely not. But please don't come and tell this Fugazi story about how y'all are friends, been friends, didn't know what was up, but you guys just decided to not speak for years, living in the same apartment complex for months. Keisha leaves, and now all of a sudden, Jayla has some strong desire to start commenting on Keisha's posts. Girl. Girl, I had to take a sip of water on that. Um, okay. That's see, I haven't been watching them as I've been watching Jayla for a minute, a couple of years, maybe even three years. It's been a minute. Um, I started watching Jayla probably around the time that she maybe around the time she moved into that Harlem apartment. I was watching her when she was contemplating moving to Cali. Um Maybe the first time when Missy left California and moved and had just built her house in Dallas. So that could have even been four years ago now, right? That's when I saw that's how I found Jayla. I was watching Missy Lynn. I've been watching Missy Lynn for a minute, uh, maybe five, six, seven years. Okay. And Missy left LA and she went to Dallas and I think Jayla came to visit her at the house. Jayla and her went on umpteen vacations, collabing, YouTube Black. I got to know Jayla's channel through Missy and that's how I subscribed to her, okay? Um, so I've been watching Jayla for a minute. I didn't know anything about anybody's Keisha Anderson. I just did not, okay? I think I had seen the videos come up on numerous occasions, but it wasn't anything that I was interested in not to be funny. I just wasn't. So anyway, um, they are doing a, uh, video where they are talking. So there's the Keisha version and then there is the Jayla version. Okay. Um, so on, let me pull this up. So on the Jayla version, um, they kind of focus more on the class 
and what's what's going on with the class they actually cover a little you know they did a good job producing the video in the sense that um they did structure out and didn't get way too repetitive what i would love for keisha to do is not use the word due diligence again ever it's so funny um the let's see this is the um so I guess they did two different looks. This is the thumbnail for Keisha's. And this is the thumbnail for um, Jayla. I mean, two very different, you know, two very different, different. I don't know. Um, I guess it would be interesting to look at the views so far. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Uh, one day ago, gosh, nobody's doesn't look like anyone's really interested in uh, this video. 15,000 views as the at the time, and I literally just screenshot these images. Um, so right around 15k on Keisha's, and right around um, 13k on Jayla's. Not a very high performing video so far. Um, being black creators the glow up uh, you know to me honestly and the angle that they love to go on with the counterparts and it's easier for the white sisses or whomever who's not black youtube is hard period these white women come on youtube and talk about how hard it is for them too and the algorithm um i think hard is a place and a perspective okay i don't think i i think that it, at any point we know as black women, as black people, that sometimes the algorithm and what's mainstream and what's pop, uh, and I mean pop culture, doesn't always swing in our favor, but does swing in our favor. I mean, at the end of the day, a lot of the trends and the styles and the things that a lot of people find most interesting are coming from many communities, including the black african-american community period right um but amongst many but f they love to run with this narrative that other people are either doing it better or have it easier or there is some sort of covert um non-women's empowerment to me honestly and i'm not going to get on this topic but it's the fake women's empowerment for me at the end of the day me not co-signing Fugazi does not mean that I am a hater and I am anti-woman's empowerment. I am pro women not being stupid. That's that's where I come from. If you are stupid, Fugazi, doing the wrong things, giving out titles to bums and dusties, I'm sorry. I don't believe that it's women's empowerment to encourage a woman to be in bad relationships just because they are thirsty to have a man in their bed and someone to call boo or bae. I just, I don't agree with that. But you're also talking to a woman who did not get married until she was in her 40s, had her first baby at 40 years old. That, and that's me, okay? Um, yeah, I wasn't thirsty for that. I waited and took my time to find someone who actually loves and respects me. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think that all of the, well, we don't do this and we don't do that and our counterparts this and our counterparts that, I just think that that's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't like hearing all of that. You need to support me because if you're not, you're like not pro-black woman, that's kind of the subtext in that. And I think that that's all bullshit. I don't really agree with that argument. But if you watch any of these ladies' videos, you're going to hear specifically in the Jayla video, a little bit of low key, like, you know, you guys need to support, like we need to support each other as black women. So go ahead and click down below. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck all the bullshit. This is bullshit, but you, you should support me because if you're not supporting me, you're like low key, not supporting black women and our counterparts. They all stick together. Oh no, the hell they don't. Let me tell you something. This week, I have spent some time watching some white commentary channels, specifically white female commentary channels who speak on YouTube mommies and things like that. And let me tell you something. These women, they these women do the most. Some of these women do some things that 
in this sector would I think even be frowned upon like doing the absolute most they love this quick money so we're going to get to that too like I don't think that there's anything wrong okay so I'm going to say a couple things in full disclosure um when this happened a couple years ago because I did report on Missy and Jayla when Jayla put up her first class I did pay my money for her class. Now, as far as taking her class, her class was very entry and basic and not that there weren't good tips given out, but understand in the almost a thousand people that registered, there were people who did not even like, they've never even shot a piece of video. At that time, I already had two monetized channels and I was putting up content. I'm not, I don't have a hundred thousand subscribers, obviously, right? But I knew how to put together content and I'm working on my channel just like anybody else. None of these people can promise you exponential growth overnight, okay? Um, Jayla's class, I'm not gonna, there's many videos that have been done about Jayla's class initially. What I can say is this, Jayla put something together that I do not think that she thought would happen. She was looking for a hundred girls. She ended up getting a thousand people to sign up. Okay. Um, in that thousand, she ended up getting a platform the first day. It was almost like you didn't even know when the class was starting. It was almost like you just had to have your notifications on. This is around the same time that she had left New York and went home to North Carolina and was living with her mom. So this was well over a year ago, I believe. Um, but before she moved to Atlanta, right? Um, it was very unorganized. There were a couple of nights that I did listen. Initially, the initial setup was extremely confusing. The initial setup, I could almost say that I think that Jayla had to email me back herself because I was like, I don't know how to get into the class. So finally, you get into the class. It was extremely unorganized. You didn't know what time it was starting. She went live. Um, you know, she went live and there were people who were like, is there going to be a syllabus? I mean, they thought it was a freaking college course. OK. And there were people who did not even know how to put up content. I I felt in the first live, I already knew that this class was not going to be for me, but I decided, let me just be a spectator. Maybe I'll do a video on it. Um, and I did not do a video on it. I logged in for a couple of, I think it went on for a couple of weeks, actually. It went on for several weeks. Um, but I did not do every single live because really after maybe the third live that I listened to and then logging into some of these live, um, there were kind of like, um, chat rooms and all of these things. It was not like there were people, you would have thought that it was kind of like a cross between, um, American Idol in some people's minds and like America's Next Top Model, like just listening to them describe the class and let's, I want to kind of, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but listening to them describe the class, you would think they're having a freaking contest and you're paying a hundred dollars and it all ends up going down to the end of some like competitions and all of these things. It's just a lot. And I'm just wondering how they are going to accomplish all of this in 30 days with assignments and pairing people up and all of these things. If you have people registering now and when it's going to actually kick off. So I'm going to just sit back and just be listening and watching because I'm sure people will be posting videos, but it seems like a very tall order for a 30 day mentorship that has not been very well laid out because the first experience with uh, Jayla's, if anybody was in there and saw what I saw, it was very unorganized. The experts were not necessarily experts or did not have enough breath to articulate what they really did and what they really know to come from an angle of teaching and being able to answer these questions. Like it was very sketchy. I'm just going to say that now, does she have lessons learned? Does she have best practices from this year over last year? 
I would hope so, but I don't know what the, you know, I don't know what the entirety of the promise is, but listening to what they are promising, it seems like a very tall order. It seems like a lot to fulfill in 30 days for people who are not doing this full time. That's what I'm going to say. And if you are a YouTuber and you already have experience, this is probably not for you. These, these classes seem to evolve or devolve into something very basic and entry level for people who've like almost never put up a video and you barely have any subscribers. If you have some subscribers, so like I think the rub with some people for Jayla initially was that she promised kind of taking your stuff to the next level and that's not what it was. It was more so it ended up going into something very basic and new and some people did ask for their money back. And if you notice, um, I didn't read through everything on this new um, class offering, but they very clearly state 100% money back guaranteed. You must be a fool to sign up and pay for any class. Girl, yeah, I, I wouldn't. Knowing what I know now about the first time, um, I absolutely would not. But when she... A year or two ago, I can't even remember when it was. I feel like it was almost two years ago. Like it was, it was after the pandemic started, but it certainly wasn't, it certainly wasn't two years ago now, but it was definitely over a year. And what she promised in terms of kind of next level, how to secure, like how to create um, proposals for brand deals and all of those kind of things, those kind of templates and how to approach brands um, on your own, how to get on PR lists, how to do any of those things. Like a lot of the things that she talked about that she promised initially were not things that were ever covered. But I just think, how are you going to work with people who don't even have videos posted, who barely know how to string along a video about working with brands. I mean, at that point, the if you want to do YouTube, the focus should be on being able to create content. You cannot sit up here and approach brands. I mean, if you want to be a model or something like that, then maybe that's what you need to be doing. But if you want to be a content creator, the focus should be on content creation and creating a, a viable channel with content that people are interested in. And as you go along, you formulate the brand. I mean, it's almost like they're promising a 30 day crash course in putting everything together. And I think it's just way too much that they're offering um, or stating that they can offer. And I don't know that they're going to be able to deliver. That's just, that's just me. Um, and didn't KK already do webinars like this? I don't know because I have no idea what her classes consisted of. Um, what did you say, Taishiri? I'm going to get Glory into modeling. Girl, <laughs> uh, they can't help. <laughs> I don't know that Jayla's going to be able to help on that. Um, okay, so initially, here's Keisha's video. I wanted to react on this a little bit because I I watched the whole entire video. Oh, my God my god that was loud okay hold on let me lower this i just want to know like i initially started up with how are you two back how are you guys back to how are you guys back to okay when you two lived in the same building for i don't know how long and did not even speak okay you guys didn't even speak to each other. And the way I confirmed this also was the day that her and Jeremy did that mukbang and he asked her, how did it feel to be in the old building? And she said, I don't, I couldn't hear what she said, but she was saying how she had never been, she hadn't been in Jayla's apartment. She hadn't been in the apartment which means that when Jayla was staying in the apartment, you never even went in there to visit. So what? I didn't even get that. Like, okay, girl, that was weird. But you guys are back to being bosom buddies again. So let me pull this up real quick 
And let's talk about this um, in just a second. Let me get to, this is when they're, this is basically how it starts up. So what you're going to find out is that they're setting the groundwork to let everybody know that it's not just, they're not just taking pictures together. They are actually out here going to collab on um, something very special, uh, according to them, something super exciting and very special. And they start answering by trying to do damage control on why they are, why they were not friends, why they were not speaking, what actually happened. So this is this video to lay this groundwork. Let me see. Can we, let me see. Can we see this? Okay. So let's get into this a little bit and hear from the ladies directly as to why they were not speaking. Keisha asked a bunch of questions on Instagram and this is what people were asking. Why did y'all all, why did y'all mend your friendship? Why did y'all stop talking? What made you guys rekindle the friendship? But according to them, they never weren't friends. But how were you two friends living in the same apartment complex buildings and you guys hadn't even gotten together for a glass of wine or, hey, girl, let me see your apartment or anything? How How is that? Are you guys over the beat that happened two years ago? What was the personal issue standing in the way of you and Jalen's relationship? So as you guys can see, there were a plethora of questions of people wanting to know you know, what happened between me and Jayla and how we got here. So we kind of wanted, we didn't want to do you guys a disservice and just ignore that elephant in the room. Yeah. So we kind of want to get a plethora of questions of people wanting to know, you know, what happened between me and Jayla and how we got here. So. And why is Jayla exhaling like that? First of all, why is Jayla cross body wearing? I don't know. Maybe that's a Prada bag. Um, that. I, I I don't what what is going on with this outfit and why are you wearing the Girl Scout bag crossbody with the ill-fitting um beige jacket? I mean it's cute and it's just fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um but why? Like I don't get the whole acting like you're nervous. I mean Guys, at the end of the day, we already know Jayla is not above some fake drama, fake beef. We know this for sure. Now, Keisha, I don't know what she's up for. If she's up for fake drama, if she likes to, we know she likes to maybe manufacture drama. We know she likes to jump into some things. Now, you know, fake beef, I, I don't know. Um, drama, like continuing the drama with Jeremy, all that kind of stuff. but. I, I'm not sure. You guys tell me how many friends are you going to fall out with and then come back and rekindle? Girl, I, I girl, I, I don't know. Which one are we talking about? Both of them? Um, they are not friends. It's just for clickbait. Uh, clickbait, Xbox One, you know the these hoes are not loyal. Absolutely. Uh, they weren't friends anymore. I wouldn't dare collab with someone after falling out with them girl and living in the same buildings i don't know if they were in the exact same building but they were in the same complex the same you know the same apartment building i think it was i don't know if it was multiple buildings but let's just say they were living in the vicinity of each other and they were not in communication before keisha left before keisha went to her new place jayla was in the building and she they did not get together. So how are you two trying to play like y'all are friends and weren't not friends when you hear that your friend moved into the building? Why hadn't you gone downstairs with a cheesecake to say, hey, girl, what's up? I heard you're in the building. Friend, she is in the hood. Keisha is utilizing the community room. Jayla got on tennis shoes too, okay? Like they are, look, they're obviously they're using the community room for this one. Cause I guess they wanted to have two different kind of setups. Um, meanwhile, you were at a whole place filming content. What happened to the content, this content place that you guys went to, um, to film the, to take the pictures you couldn't film there or did it not come out right? Like what was up? You guys did that whole photo shoot 
but you guys couldn't sit there and film there but you guys ended up coming up with this scenario where you guys are wearing the matchy matchy twin um feather tops you guys are wearing the matchy matchy feather tops and um and then you guys took these pictures um for the thumbnails and then you're in the multi-purpose room so i don't know what was going on um you know those well that's not the thumbnail girl but yeah multi-purpose room these are the videos so this was keisha's video um let's watch just a little bit and listen to what's going on okay let's let's hear and let's talk about it okay i kind of wanted we didn't want to do you guys a disservice and just ignore that elephant in the room yeah. so we kind of want to get into a little bit about what happened between us and then get into i'm just trying to figure out why after all the time of filming that fugazi girls like us whatever that was and knowing that that room has such a nasty echo that they did not bother to have some microphones or something to soften the echo in that room because it is very hard to hear the video so first things first Jay, how do we get here well me and you never had beef. Yeah. So that's the first thing. We <laughs> never had beef. It was never anything that we needed to talk about. And social media just kind of made their own story about everything mm -hmm. and ran with it. Absolutely. For years. For years. For years. For years. For years. And it was, I'm, so I'm not going to lie, it wasn't like it was going over our heads what had happened, but this is something that typically happens a lot with social media relationships, um, especially with being an influencer, being content creators, being bloggers. It is very easy to sit on the opposite end of the lens and watch on the screen other people's lives. It's also very easy to be hypercritical and to think illogically about certain scenarios. You know, Keisha has a certain arrogance about her she thinks she's so damn smart. You know what I mean? Like, can I get a witness on that? Like, it's just, it's so easy to be an influencer and a blogger and da, 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 and sit. Are you saying that as an influencer um, sharing your life, it's easy for people to be on the outside and look in on what you're doing? Because you're basically saying that as a blogger, what you just said, right, right, Kim, it made no sense what she said. Basically, she's saying that as a blogger, you're looking at other people's lives. No, as a blogger, people are looking at you, okay? And think illogical. It's not illogical to think that a situation happened and then you see two people not speaking and then you do one and one and that equals two and the two equals, well, maybe they fell out. Like, what the fuck, man? Like, you think you're so smart. She's very smug about it. You know what I mean? Like, do y'all agree with me on that? They are fake. Jayla got beat up by Missy Lynn for downplaying her brand deals and take and talking about her behind her back. Girl, you know, I know. Um, I, I talked about it and I also interviewed Missy. So girl, that is, uh, that's, that's, you know, girl, Jayla knows, Jayla knows. Jayla also knows probably not to even talk about Missy Lynn period. Okay. Um, because the last time she talked about Missy Lynn, Missy Lynn basically told her like, basically you keep talking and I'm gonna start talking. You keep, you keep sharing stuff and uh, I'm going to share some stuff you definitely don't want me to share. So anyway, let's keep going. But yeah, Keisha is so damn smug. Okay, let's keep going. Or judge it in a way just because of something that you saw yeah. for a quick second. Yes. When that was literally just that. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, take it to the next level. So if you guys know that childhood game telephone, that's kind of how I kind of relate this situation to like telephone happened back in the day. And it was kind of like people were going from person to person saying, hey, this is what happened. Oh, this is what Jaylee said. Oh, this is what Jaylee did. And by the time it got to me, it was like, wait, what? Like, what is going on here? I got a question. Why didn't you watch the video? 
So I didn't watch the video and I find it like a repeated thing for myself. <laughs> Now that I look back at my YouTube career, I don't watch a lot of damn videos. Um, I did watch the video because it was very triggering for me of how people jump down my throat about something. And I didn't want to see you or myself being betrayed by someone who I trusted because the way it was brought to me by telephone, it was spun out of control. Like it was made to be something that it was not. Yeah. And I kind of just. The weird thing to me, though, is if you guys are friends and you guys are cool, you guys film one day and Jayla puts up a video and you hear that Jayla was being funny in the video or didn't like the way something was portrayed or people are coming to you telling you that your friend put something up that you did not like. Why had you not even called her at that time just to say, hey, what's going on? I keep hearing about this video. I haven't watched it yet, but what's up? Oh, you know, when I showed da -da Bailey and da -da -da -da, girl, it was nothing. Oh, OK, girl. OK, well, I'll see you next week. So you mean to tell me you were hearing stuff? You heard something you heard from the comment section and then you two just stopped speaking. Is that supposed to be how it went down? Because if that's how it went down, then y'all two weren't friends. Y'all two were just collabing like you guys are collabing right now, right? Am I getting this right or what? She told LaToya something different in the interview. She lies so damn much. And, and telephone is not a child's play story. At the end of the day, the bottom line is this. People see what they see and they get what they get from it, right? Like someone could be like, Fran's a total bitch right now. And someone could be like, no, she was just doing a reaction and just giving her opinion. And, and then someone else could be like, she lies all the time. It's just your, it's like your perspective. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, there should, if you have a real friend, there should be nothing that comes between you and a real friend, especially if it's some sort of a misunderstanding and give someone the opportunity. Or like Jayla said, why didn't you go watch the video? So Keisha is no one's friend. Yes, we know that. You haven't spoken. They haven't spoken in years. And they also did not speak. Jayla lives in her building. And Jayla's been in the building since she came back to Atlanta. Keisha was living either over or under and those two never hooked up the whole time they were in the building but can you guys tell me word on the street is that Jayla fell out with Najee the girl who left New York and moved to Atlanta to come chill with her friend and I, I heard word on the street is that they're not even friends I saw Najee on her channel looking lonely going out with her neighbor that she'd never been out with before. She said, oh, I just met a new friend. She lives next door. And I saw her at Jayla's birthday, but she wasn't over there like getting dressed with her and doing like what they would normally do. So, but I did see her at the dinner, but I haven't seen her hanging with her. But Jayla also strikes me as the type that maybe she got a man and she kind of played her friend to the left, but I don't think Jayla's with her man anymore. I don't know. Maybe I could be wrong, but um, her man, her whatever was going on with her and her man, the energy didn't seem right around Valentine's Day, so we haven't seen him since. So he might be done. Um, let me see what else you guys are saying over here. Um, yes, the energy's off. Uh, Vicky, they weren't friends anymore. He, he did say that and KK believe it without checking with Jayla and never spoke again. Yeah, that would kind of, for me, I wouldn't be friends with someone who immediately believed the bullshit um, about me and didn't give me an opportunity to make good or to explain, you know, what was actually really going on. That would have pissed me off. Um, Jayla also, girl, we know the power, girl, the whole baddie twins and lying and saying that he stole the computer and all of the things. It was ridiculous, girl. Um, I know about the Jayla stuff. I don't know as much about as it relates to her and Keisha. I got it. I Like I said, I've been watching Jayla for a minute, but I know a lot more about what happened with her and Missy versus 
this thing. I yeah, I like Najee a lot. Najee's very sweet, but who knows? I mean, I, I don't know. I, I just know that we see Jayla falling out with people. She introduces us to friends. And then next thing you know, she's not friends with them anymore. So it's very strange. Anyway, let's keep going and hear this Fugazi um, explanation of telephone and how Keisha is going to try to explain how you have a friend that you're friends with and that you say is a friend, you don't treat like a friend that was living in your apartment building that you decided not to speak to the whole entire time that you were there and want us to believe that there was no beef. Why didn't you not ever speak to her when she moved into your building? Like, that's weird. Like, that's very weird. I was like, well, I can just tell you about what Tiffany said. So pretty much people were saying to me that Jayla was sneakily filming me. She already hated being in my house, my space. She was over me, all these different things. And based off of her actions on her own platform, um, so Which I thought we had a great a great weekend. Yeah, exactly. Like, okay, so back then yeah. I have never been to Atlanta before. Mm -hmm. I get up, Keisha. Like, oh my god, my um, publishing company is having this event, and they want me to be like one of the speakers for my book. And mm -hmm. I really want to come to Atlanta. And you know, I'm about to finish college, and I'm like, you know, can I come stay with you? Like, this would be so cool. You know, me and Keisha would then be in New Mexico, okay? Too. Exactly. We've been cruising. We've been in Mexico and stuff. So, you know, I. I, um, you know, asked could I come stay with her, and we had this whole weekend, and we were doing things. And I didn't think that we, I didn't think the weekend was bad. I had a great weekend. I didn't. It, it was nothing of like, oh, I hated being there. Like yeah. what? Like yeah. where do you get that from? Like yeah. what? I mean, yeah. This is a, oh, and then I think we were even going looking at apartments. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Apartments. Yeah. Well, there had to have been something to it because you two didn't speak anymore. So whether it was Keisha um, not speaking to her or whatever, but you know, guys, at a certain point in your life, there is a lot of value in getting a hotel room. Now, as a young single person, and maybe you don't know anybody and you wanted to hang out with people, there's just a certain point in your life where you're going to realize, girl, get a hotel room. You don't need to go stay at everybody's house. Sometimes being in people's homes gets very awkward and um, it just gets old after a while. So that could have been the situation. I don't know. But, you know, um, sometimes people are happy to have company, but sometimes it does get awkward. You may think that it might be fun to have company, but when the company gets there, it's kind of like you're actually already over it. So not that that was actually really the case, but at the end of the day, there is, you can't put a value on getting your own, you know, your own um, accommodations when you're going to be out of town. You know, girl, I'm all for my own room, my own bathroom, everything. Shopping. All of that never made it to the vlog. Yeah. You were showing me the apartments here in yeah. Atlanta. You're, she's trying to convince me, like, no, girl, you were like Atlanta. Yeah. I'm like, mm. So yeah. even back then, it was this possibility of, like, would I move to Atlanta? Exactly. Yeah. All those years ago. And yeah. I had a dog, um, which he's still here, but he lives with my life now. But I had a dog, and at that time, that was all I had. So a, a lot of people kind of was like, oh, my gosh, this is this for a dog. She treats him like a baby, blah, 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 blah. And I selectively show what I want to show on my platform, and so does everyone else who vlogs or anything. I um, mean, it's within our own discretion to do so. Um, and in this particular weekend when Jayla was there, <laughs> my dog was acting a fool. He was eat, like he was eating stuff off the floor, and he was – Throwing up really, really bad. Um, so at one point, Jay was filming in my room some shoes. It was funny to me because all my baby really was acting up in the video. Yeah. And, you know, nobody saw what Keisha was doing. They just saw me with shoes behind me. And I'm laughing at, you know, laughing at like, damn, baby. Um, and that kind of just was taken yeah, out of context. Yeah. And people are like, oh, Jay, I wanted you to look bad. or And I never seen the clip. And we never even talked about the situation yeah. until... A week ago. Last week. <laughs> like we because I probably was like, what happened? Honestly, from what it was made out to be, mm -hmm. I almost made me say, like, dang, like did I do something like yeah. I, I know I was that bad, but me and Carl Why didn't y'all have that conversation three, four years ago? That just doesn't even make sense that you guys have not had this conversation. And you were getting ready to graduate college. When was that? Like, um, 
aren't you 28 or something now? 27, 28? Maybe she's 25. I don't even know. But, um, I mean, Keisha and Jeremy have been living together at least four or five years now, haven't they? They got, what, three-year-olds? So maybe four years they've been living together because he came and never left. So it had to have been at least four years ago. Five years ago, you guys never talked about it and never talked again. So you went and spent a whole weekend at Keisha's house and you guys never spoke again. That's that's weird to me. That's very strange. And even the conversation of what happened, that's just weird. And then all of a sudden, so all of a sudden a week ago, you guys talk about this, but then now you're already formulating some sort of mega marathon mentorship class, AKA uh, America's next top YouTuber. The fuck? What? <laughs> how is that going to work? I'm still curious how you're going to jam pack all of that into what you plan to pack it into. Like, that's a lot. That's a lot. Um, Let's see. Let's keep going. I actually was filming. I'm going to parties, filming parties. So yeah. me filming, yeah. you fussing at your dog, exactly. that's not nothing to me. Yeah. I'm like, this man is drinking and drunk like I'm at. Like, you know, like, yeah. it just wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal to me. Yeah. And I didn't know how your audience was yeah. going to take that. I didn't yeah. know. So that was kind of my first experience yeah. where I posted something that actually wasn't yeah. what the comments made it seem. And I was kind of yeah. like, but it was still nothing that we talked about. Like, yeah, we, we never, talk we never about talked it. about it. And I can say that maybe, you know, our audiences responding that way did affect our relationship. Yeah, for sure. Um, because we just didn't talk about it. Yeah, we um, did. I, back then, I 100% could say, like, I was not the person that I was going to call and just, I don't know. I more so just, like, kind of retreat. Yeah. So, um, although I felt like, you know, I, I didn't do any, you know, I didn't to do anything yeah. you're just like okay we just won't talk about it and then years had just went on and i wasn't mad and yeah we just you know so it is that is the unfortunate part about social media is that it can affect your relationship yeah point like period it can and so. luckily for us we were able to grow within our because we've been doing this for years but we were both able to grow <laughs> but one thing that has stood out to me the most with um my social media career and i'm sure jayla can agree to this as well is um, the fact what gets me is that Keisha um makes herself out to be such a wordsmith and a um you know I've got a theater degree um how when I feel like just in my observation when I think that Keisha could be fibbing or embellishing do you guys notice how she starts to, st to, st to stutter um Okay, just a little bit, you know, and I know it happens to a lot of people, but I think stuttering sometimes happens when folks are nervous, right? Um, and I think if you're not confident in what you're saying, then the stuttering and stammering comes out. But why would you not be confident in what you're saying unless what you're saying isn't true? What do you guys think about that? She laughs when she lies. Interesting. Yes. It's like a nervous affect, the, right? The fact that the black community does not really have the uplifting. Oh, God. I hate this fake women's empowerment stuff, guys. It, You know, we're not born all of a sudden like, like this notion that just because you are a black woman, you are going to support wholeheartedly everything every other black woman does. I mean, I think ideally that's a nice idea. And I think at the end of the day, don't, I mean, unless you are just a hater and don't support anyone, don't we, so, I mean, like if I spend money with you, if I, if I, I mean, people support in many different ways, right? And I just think that the notion that just because you are in the same race as someone, that you have a kinship because you share a commonality of racial identification that I'm supposed to support you with my dollars and my time. That doesn't necessarily hold true. There's a lot of people on this world in this world 
and on this earth and in this country and on this YouTube, I don't have to just support you because you're a black female. I'm sorry. I mean, maybe people do differentiate and say things like, you know, I really try to throw my dollars or my time and very conscious support towards women of color because I feel strongly that that there's so much support in other areas that I want to throw my money and my dollars to my community. And there's nothing wrong with to me. And maybe I'm saying the same thing, articulating it in that way. But it's not just because I woke up one day, I'm going to come and support your shit just because you're black and I'm black. It doesn't work like that. If I see someone doing what I think is interesting and something that I think that I can vibe with. And we are, um, I, I feel like, wow, this person is doing something and it's interesting. Um, I, I just, I don't believe in this fake woman's empowerment. There is, I would hope that there's no one in here tonight just because I'm a black female. Like I truly doubt you guys are in here supporting me because I'm a black female. I would hope that you're in here supporting me because I'm providing some commentary on a topic that you find interesting and you're here first because you think that I provide something entertaining or something um, worthy to spend your Saturday night, right? And then maybe the fact that I'm black on top of that is an extra added bonus, but I don't really want anyone here just because I'm a black female. I want you guys to be here because you enjoy what I'm doing and you vibe with what I'm, I'm offering. I, I don't need any like charity just because like people want to come through with some of this fake woman's empowerment stuff. I think that that is bullshit. Whenever she starts talking about that, it just, that's one of the things that I'm just like, Keisha, that audience who, that that notion, that, uh, you know, that argument resonates with is going to be very, very small. Like, you are not going to have a bunch of black women come and support you just because you're black when you are with the Fugazi. I'm sorry. You got to eliminate the Fugazi before you're going to have people come and support you. And people need to support you because they think that you're a bad bitch or because you got something going on that they find interesting, not just because you are black, okay? Period. That's just not the way it works. And I just feel like that is such fake women's empowerment. Women's empowerment is supporting women as women who are doing things that promote positivity in the community of women, whether you, whatever race you are, period. Now, obviously we as black women, there's a lot that we can do to support each other. But at the end of the day, I, I don't, I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I think that that's, that's a whole argument that we can talk about at another time. But I just feel like maybe it's immaturity, maybe it's a lack of maturity or wisdom on this matter. I don't really know, but I just I don't I don't get that. And I um, you hear that a lot from some of these ratchet moms that I cover. And I think it's bullshit, too, because if you're living foul, um, I'm here to tell you I was uh, I I create a platform that I feel strongly about telling people don't fall for this bullshit. This is not a way that you want to live your life. You know, those are the kind of things that, you know, if you want to be successful in life, these are some of the things that you need to do. It is not women's empowerment for, you know, to me to not call out the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Um, anyway, let's continue, but thank you guys. You guys are pretty awesome. I love you guys. Um, let's continue the conversation. I'm going to drop the call in. So if you guys would like to share your thoughts, like you can do so. Um, we have had to grow our own careers. And yes, we have had collaborations and we've networked and we, you know, work with other people and teamed up with other people. But it's really, really hard to grow at the same speed of our counterparts. Like, it is really, really hard because we feel sometimes there is no place for thousands of black people to Keisha, your channel is ratchet. So if there is a counterpart to her, let's say a white woman, Hispanic woman, Asian woman, who has grown leaps and bounds over her at the same time that she came out, I bet you she does not have her man on here singing songs like Rich Ninja Problems, okay? I'm sure she does not have 
uh, that that woman does not have her man on there inebriated on Instagram. That woman, let's face it, she may be married. There's some girl who I just recently, uh, what is it, Love Meg, um, who I've kind of started to learn her channel recently. This this woman was living in a damn trailer, okay? She was living in a trailer, very modest uh, uh, situation when she first started YouTubing. And girl, they live in a nice home. They've got the, you know, a couple of channels. They've got the... Um, They've changed their lifestyle, driving Mercedes, driving a, a nice car, husband quitting his job, all of the things, right? Um, I don't think her husband is out here doing like what you're like. You can't talk about the struggle when you live the struggle. Like you can't talk about struggle channel when you're sitting up there with half a million subscribers and you got a wretched ass romance that you're trying to stick down everybody's throat. But then you've got the counterparts allegedly skating. They're not skating. They're living, but they're living cleaner. They're living less foul. They're living less ratchet. And they are able to skate past you. Why? Because you have a sketchy baby daddy, boo-boo. You got a sketchy baby daddy. And you're not exemplifying what maybe some of these brands like that she's dealing with want to get in get in with you spend key vember talking about the escapades of your man getting another woman pregnant you spent vlogmas talking about a bunch of bullshit and hashtagging the pastel twins like you are a problem how are you going to coach people on developing a brand when you are developing a brand of minor children and you hashtag their names in the drama of adults who are in all kinds of bullshit. So you're going to talk to people about how to formulate a brand, but you've got three minor children who you're trying to create a brand for, but you hashtag them in your adult drama. Is that the proper way to create a brand for children? When people hit the hashtag and see you talking about Ashley and Jeremy cheating on you nonstop, won't stop, can't stop, don't stop. The fuck? Who in the world is taking advice from you? The counterparts are skating past you because the counterparts know good and well to not be wretched. Okay? That's how they're doing better than you. Okay? I'm just saying. I'm just saying you can't keep using this argument. See, people like to use this. So they pull out the black card because they want us to start thinking that there's something wrong with us because we're not supporting them. Then you want to bring out the argument that the white women are doing better faster because we're not supporting. The white women don't have their sketchy husbands out on front street like you got your sketchy boyfriend. These white women somehow get their men to marry them. And then they, they may have one or two. They, girl, they could be unwed. It doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, these women are sitting up here married to their husbands, okay? They may have some older kid. They may have one kid that they have with somebody else. They might have two baby fathers. But they know how to put their best foot forward. They don't accentuate the negative. They don't accentuate what uh, what Main Street doesn't want to pay for. They don't try to throw a lifestyle down people's throats to make them accept their shortcomings. If you want to sit around and have baby after baby with damn Splash the Don, girl, that's your business. I mean, at the end of the day, Jayla, girl, Jayla bought this all on herself. The fact that we were even talking about damn Corey B the other day. This guy was talking about having sex with you, 
about how you got evicted from places. Girl, that's word on the street. Corey B was dragging you two years ago. He said he was enjoying having sex with you, trying to convince you to not be doing things on the streets. Um, some things called uh, AKA Molly, things of that nature. That's what he alleged in that video right here down below. You can go check it out for yourself or go check out my video above um, from five days ago. We played some excerpts of it, but these two have opened up a can of worms running their yappers about something that they probably shouldn't have even bothered to talk about. Y'all should have just dropped the class. Y'all probably should have just dropped the class and kept it pushing. Sitting around trying to explain the fugazi of this alleged friendship. Yeah, people really aren't here for it right now. Let's keep listening for just another minute. It's only like it has to be that one token black that one girl or that one token black girl or that one token black guy. And also over the years of being on social media, it has always been a place of... Um, being inadequate like if you have a million followers it's not normal for you to collaborate or even work or help or contact contact anybody. pull up <laughs> respond hit the follow <laughs> button comment yeah because there's so many fugazi people on youtube you don't even know who to trust there's a lot of people out here quiet as it's kept who have worked so hard that I'm not trying to get in with someone else because I don't know what the fuck you got going on. And I'm just one video away from destroying everything that I've worked for. So there's a lot of people who have had to learn over years. Yeah, you can't collab with everyone. You know why? Because if all of a sudden they do something to fuck up, guess what? Now I'm associated with you and now it's a problem. Okay, does that make sense? Does that make sense, guys? Hey, guys. Okay. Why are you going to collab? Like, look what happened to ASAP Rocky the other day, right? He gets arrested, right? Girl, can can he? They're not even married, but she's carrying his baby. So who's who has to talk about it? Who has who's involved with it? His billionaire girlfriend. What happened to him happened to her. Because guess what? They deal with each other. They're collabing. They're doing the ultimate collab right now because they're having a baby, right? Are you kidding me? People who have worked hard to get a million subscribers, they're not eager to let things fuck up. You know why? Damien Prince even said this when Damien Cryer was pregnant, uh, had uh, Erica, Erica, Love by Erica was having the baby, right? The first one with Damien Cryer, Damien Prince was like, yeah, we don't, even this is going to be his brother. This is a woman that his dad is messing with. He's like, yeah, no, we don't just let people come around us. These people have millions and millions of subscribers and are worth millions and millions of dollars from YouTube. These are people who were working, what, at Domino's Pizza less than 10 years ago? Him and Bianca? Bianco, 16 years old, working at the pizza spot with uh, with Damien Prince. And he kept trying YouTube channel after YouTube channel after YouTube channel after YouTube channel. And now they are rich. You think that they are going to jeopardize their riches, their millions, their views, what they're trying to build for their kids to try to collab with some damn Splash the Don and, and Keisha Kaylee, you think that they're going to just go jump in and just go start collabing with people? No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Like, I, to me, I get really tired of hearing that argument. That's one argument that I hate to hear. Girl, if you have worked to get 100 subscribers, you don't want to jeopardize it. You think someone who has now created a situation where they're making a lot of money wants to jeopardize overnight? Because so, do you remember of some years ago, um, it was like Jaclyn Hill and Graveyard. Where's Graveyard Girl now? The girl who used to do all the makeup palettes and everything? Was, didn't, and um, Nikki Tutorials, Somebody was out there with Jeffree Star and somebody got caught saying the N-word or something. It took all of them down. It was a bad look for all of them. Do you guys remember that? 
if you were following in the makeup community, there was some drama with that, okay? And let me tell you something. It was a problem. You cannot get closely aligned with people and not think that it's not going to affect you. All right? All right, let me show you something else. I'm dropping the call in. So maybe I have time for a couple of calls. Whoever wants to state their piece, I would love to hear you. But let's take a look at this. Um, did we hear enough? Um, if you guys have not seen this video in its entirety, go ahead and support sis because sis says, girl, we black. So go ahead and come through, okay? Go ahead and come through with the come through. Go ahead and check out the Fugazi, okay? Because she says that we do not support each other as black women. So go ahead and show her some black woman love if you don't mind. Um, because homegirl seems to think that we need to just flock over there because we are all part of the African diaspora. Okay. Are you, are you with that? Does that make sense to you? Are y'all with that? I'm not, not with you, but I'm not going to flock. I'm not going to spend my money just because girl, we all come from the motherland. Our, our skin is melanated. I don't, I don't, I don't get the melanated discount. Why do I have to give you the melanated support? Okay, like, come on now, let's be for real. You got to offer some value. You got to offer me some laughs. You got to offer me some information. You got to offer me some professionalism. You got to offer me something that is interesting, okay? All right, I'm just not showing up just because we are all part of the diaspora, honey. That It don't work like that. This is 2022, okay? Period. All right, it don't, it don't work like that. And it, it doesn't work like that for the counterparts, honey, baby. They don't just show up just because y'all both Irish or 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 so and so's half Italian or whatever. It doesn't work like that, boo boo. People show up to channels they like because there's something going on. You are offering something. You're offering some entertainment. You're offering an aesthetic. You're offering some encouragement. You're offering something visually um, interesting to look at. I am not just on the check-in because we both have blonde hair, okay? I don't think it works like that, boo-boo. Girl, she wants us to show. It's not women's empowerment because we're not showing up because we're melanated, okay? That's some bullshit. You didn't show up to my channel. Oh, maybe you did, but you sent your fucking trolls over here. Bitch, boo, bye, okay? Stop it. Stop the stop the cap. Okay? Stop the cap right now. I'm sorry. These days you got to earn your shit. You want people to come to your channel? Do something on your channel. Show up worthy. That's some women's empowerment. This is me telling you as a big sis, as a woman, if you want women to support you, do something for the women to show up. Stop being a brat. Stop being stupid. Stop complaining about a relationship that you're not going to leave. Stop accept, expecting everyone to stroke you like a cat about your motherhood and your parenting skills. Girl, ain't nobody show up over here today to provide me a blue ribbon. Stand up, be a grown ass woman, and then maybe some more women will show up. But at the end of the day, if you just want us to show up because we all have vaginas, girl, it ain't happening. Okay? Girl, bye. All right. Okay. So this is girl, we're giving you some free promo right now. So in a way, girl, I'm, I'm, I'm showing support. So I don't know who the photographer was, but the photographer did their thing. I'm not gonna lie. The photographer, I feel like, okay, but you know, this is what I think. I like this set of pictures right here, but I feel like it does not tell me anything about what's getting ready to happen. It does not say anything about social media. Okay. That's number one. Um, as far as the brand, the marketing, what I'm going to say is this, what are you selling? I don't even get it. This is, um, it looks like you guys are doing America's next top model. Okay. Hold on guys. I think we have a caller. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hey, how are you? I am doing good. How are you? I'm great. I'm, I, finally caught alive number one so i was excited about that 
So I was like, let me call in. Um, I love your glasses. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So you probably don't know me, but I'm the one that sent you the message on Instagram. Girl, I don't tell my sources, but thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes you know, I, I don't tell my sources, but yes, I, I see the picture. Yes. But thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate welcome, you reaching you're welcome my dear but I wanted to call in because I'm honestly I'm sick of her I'm really <laughs> sick of her like I am over this whole series I'm over this whole drama I feel like she is keeping it going because her channel is clearly dying I personally think there's something wrong with her I really do I think that it's something more going on and she might need to seek some kind of professional help I know she says mm. she's in therapy but I don't know what therapist she's seeing, but she needs something because some, something is missing. Um, it, it, it's just, it makes no sense to me. And my personal opinion about this whole Jayla Keisha collab, I think it's another scam. It's a money grab. I feel like at this point she's grasping for straws. Like she needs to make up the coins for, you know, the house that she has to pay for. So it, it just makes no sense. It makes okay. No let's, sense. let's talk about that for a minute. So I'm sorry, guys, I was talking about this visual, but you guys couldn't see it. I think this artwork here is very nice, you know, um, but it doesn't scream to me. YouTube. Like it doesn't scream to me, grow your social media. I'm going to help you build the YouTube channel of your dreams. There's nothing here about money. I see two women in white and who are, you know, faces beat. I, I don't see anything on here that's telling me about what's getting ready to happen. Me, it, if it I'm looks looking like, at it looks this, like a modeling school. I was just about to say that. Looking at it, the visual, I would think, oh, they're going to show me how to do makeup or it's something to do with beauty. I wouldn't think just looking at the visual that, oh, this is something that has to do with building my YouTube channel or building my brand or whatever. I would look at it and think, oh, OK, they're makeup artists or they're models or something like that. That's just what Ab I took from it. Absolutely. We have another caller, but hold on. The caller um, who's holding, just hold on just a second, OK? Um, so then we scroll up and it's a, it's time to think alike to think like a six figure digital creator, a proven game changing mentorship, a proven. Well, we don't know it's proven because yours is not, this is not proven. It's not proven because this is a brand new venture. Uh, master the skill of monetizing your life, a proven game changing mentorship that comes with an intense 30 day challenge to empower female content creators. Female, so you were saying male content, content creators, creators are, not, it don't are not welcome. So female content creators and YouTubers, female content creators and YouTubers who wrote this uh, to become that girl in Child, no time. Not too okay? educated women. Can, okay, never mind. Okay. It, it, that doesn't even make sense. So female content creators and YouTubers, right? Unlike other courses and mentorship, the Glow Up Mentorship comes with actionable steps worksheets, calendars, and a community of like-minded people. Simply put, this mentorship, simply put, this mentorship is your handheld roadmap to becoming a successful, highly revered, and viral it girl. Oh, none, of which, none of which, that, none of which, Keisha. They is. are. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're promising an awful lot, right? That's a lot in 30 days. So 30 days, like, are they going to do this every day? And then look at this shot right here. Everybody look at this. How is this? So YouTube, if you're 19 and you're trying to, like, you got to ask your mom. Not, not, I don't know how old you are. It doesn't make a difference. But what I'm saying is this. If you're someone who needs to get some buy-in from mom, like, mom, I need to take the Keisha Kaylee class or the Jay LaCorion. And, and I go and look at this. I would be like, girl, bye. No, I'm not giving you my money. Like, look at this girl has her whole entire chest out. I'm like, still that stuck doesn't make sense. I'm still stuck on the proven. Where has it been proven? Where are your sources? Where are your receipts? Who have who have you mentored in the past that is at this very moment making six figures? Like, I'm conf I, I don't understand. Yeah, she does not understand. Well, what I think because means. they they said that they've made six figures. Okay, but where's the receipts? How do we know that that's okay. true? Okay, How do you know that well, you, in fact, made six figures? You can say right. you have multiple businesses all day, but that doesn't mean right. anything. It's multiple failed businesses. 
Is the six figures from YouTube? Exactly. Let me let, me let this uh, this other sis join in, and let's hear what she has to say. Hello. Hi, friend. Hi. How are hi. you? I'm fine. Uh, say hi to Kina. Kina, say hi. hi. Kina. Is it so is it Breezes? Yes. Hi, Breezes. <laughs> hi. So one, if it, we all know that Jayla dropped the um YouTube hustle course in 2020 for um damage control when she got aired out by her ex and uh, Missy for being broke. This Absolutely. is literally the same course because I was reading through the comments. Uh, I think I went to Keisha's page and I saw someone said they signed up and it took them to that website. It, it, I don't know if it's the band. There's a band um, uh, which was the app that was used the first time, but it was very unorganized and it, it was... was it was absolutely did so you were in it too um I did, I did actually sign up and i remember the first day i went on first of all jayla was late i mean right. she was wow. late. and when you came on it was like a thousand girls on it which she had marketed it as she was gonna give a handful of youtubers right. an opportunity to grow it was a thousand people in there and i think that's what turned a lot of people off well, so I, I think she wasn't like aware. Three. I don't think she thought she was she had that reach yet. I mean, she should have known. I mean, you have she had over two hundred thousand subscribers and she was in a shitstorm. I don't think she thought a thousand people would sign up, but a thousand people signed up, and I don't think she was ready for it. And what she promised, it wasn't so much that she didn't deliver everything, but it was not professional at all. Yeah. And it was very thrown together. And it was just, it, it was okay. But for I, for me, it was not anything that I could use other than just be an observer. So it was interesting from the standpoint of just people watching. Um, but I never reacted to it just because I just, I, you know, I didn't, I obviously I saw what was going on and I didn't want to knock what was going on because i think she probably did help some people but it was really for people who were very 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 new very but new. i i just yeah. don't think that what she is what they're even promising now how are you going to deliver all of that in 30 days unless this is like an everyday type of thing for, for one a lot of what they're offering is online for free you're promising 30 um content ideas per platform um i've seen creators social media strategists give out a list of a hundred ideas broken mm -hmm. down by niche for free mm -hmm. the only thing i think that's of value probably in that course is the the tax part of it but everything else to me is literally free content there's a platform called um aspire iq where if you sign up that's where you can literally apply for black brand partnerships yourself and mm -hmm. there's actually aspire academy where you can go through a whole creator course um that they offer for free and it gives and they also give you a free worksheet what should be in your media kit um, a template for your social media calendar they give you literally everything um none of these girls are making six figures off social media they, they probably were making six figures in 2017 on the height of their what youtube was at the time when they were in college and they were riding on that wave but none of them are making six figures now you I, know I, who's I, making money right now which i'm sure raven. there's plenty but girl rave uh, well, yeah you know raven is always making money Period. um peyton marie is making she's making money uh, Monroe Steel is making money. High Low Lux. All these women that I tell you guys about. All, we already know Jackie, girl. Jackie isn't yeah, even doing Jackie, videos. Yeah, and Jackie, Jackie's, they, they're not in the Jackie's same check is still Jackie, coming right? through. Jackie's I, still I getting money from you. funny YouTube. that they mentioned Jackie and, talk, and said something like she's the token black content creator. No, she's wow. not. Wow. No, she's about. not. Wow. No, she's not. So disrespectful. Yeah, no. Uh, Jackie has earned her spot. She's not a token anything. Jackie, Jackie works Jackie extremely giving, hard. And Jackie gives away stuff like free info all the time. She does that all the time. 
I I find it really funny that all these creators gonna come up with a course when they're on the decline. None of y'all was no. offering help to any creator when you were riding your wave. And but as you know, soon as your your channel is on the decline, you now want to be the big sister of okay. YouTube. Absolutely. Well, you know, and I think too, absolutely, Patricia Bart. I just love her. Um, but you know, I think um. You know, Jackie doesn't get a lot of credit. Well, Jackie gets credit. We all know what Jackie has done. Jackie has been so influential in makeup that there, you know, a lot of these brands, I would even venture to say, and you guys can say I'm wrong if you want to, um, Fenty Beauty, even KKW, Kylie, a lot of these brands that have had to become more inclusive because you have someone like Jackie getting millions of views on makeup videos and her being able to say, you know what, it cosmetics or Too Faced or whatever. Yeah, you just don't have, uh, you don't have foundation in my range. You don't have contour sticks for me. You yeah. don't have this. You, her being able to call out these makeup brands, and also them also realizing, yeah, we do have yellow undertones. We do have orange undertones. Um, some of these makeups are gray. Some of these uh, makeup colors just don't make sense. You're not making in the range for us. You're making these weird shades that come out on us looking gray or pasty or funeral makeup. Like she had been able to call out so much in makeup to make makeup better to where I feel like I see more black women trying makeup and really finding makeup something that they want to use because of Jackie and people like Patricia and other people calling out to these brands that what you were doing didn't make sense and you know you needed to have a fuller range because we are you know our we're complexions diverse. are so different yeah so these women have done a lot these women are not token nothing a lot of these makeup gurus have done a lot and there's plenty of them you just she they she doesn't know any of them because to Keisha's point she doesn't watch youtube so what she says she's sitting Allegedly. around watching reaction videos this is what she's watching she's not watching a jackie video right now she's watching probably this in the bushes and this this ain't going well this could help her but she's you know, she's she'll go live and be triggered. <laughs> uh, I just I found it funny that they said there's no there was no beef, but it's been like five years. You exactly. Know, so How were y'all living same in the height. same building and you didn't speak? Why didn't Jayla like, girl? I'm on the fifth floor. I girl, and I don't know what floor Jayla lives on. Let's make note. I don't know what floor, but how is it that you guys were living in the same apartment complex and y'all never connected then? I, I mean, for me, that doesn't I make like any sense. They both couldn't even be upfront about, you know, what they felt at the time. The Not video. honest. Because Keisha told Latoya something else. She yep. said she was hurt by the fact that Jayla left that in and how she could have left other stuff in about Jayla in her videos and she did not. She's now they're saying, oh, there was no beef. We weren't really friends like that, blah, blah, blah. They, they couldn't even be upfront, bro. <laughs> yeah, that was. um. I don't get it. And if you were really hurt, why not just have a moment like, hey guys, YouTube is really silly. Jayla put this video out and I was in my feelings because a bunch of people came to me. I didn't even watch the video. So I was kind of silly for being in my feelings, but I was in my feelings and we didn't speak for a while. And I just put Jayla on the back burner or whatever the case might just keep it real. They I don't think she knows how to be real, like, honestly. Just keep it real. Like, I was in my feelings, and I just didn't want to fuck with you anymore. And Jayla was probably like, yeah, I was I was trying to finish school, and I just moved on. I was like, well, forget her. She's not speaking to me. I'm not speaking to her. And we left it at that. And then now we, we talked, and it was actually really nothing. Like, there's a way to, like, rather than try to pretend like it didn't even exist, didn't why don't you tell us what like, really happened? Like it, like, it was, they made it seem like it was just... Well, as Keisha would say, the trolls. It wasn't right. the trolls. Because you felt some type of way. I just feel like both of them don't know how to be real with themselves. So can't expect them to be real with each other. Just like watching, because I've watched Jayla and I've watched Keisha prior to all of this crap that's going on. And 
like now Jayla is going to the, you know, real estate classes and things like that. And I just, just by, based on just watching her channel and seeing how she interacts with certain people, it's like, it's convenient for her. Cause now she has Taja, which I also watch her as well. Cause she's Haitian and I support all my Haitian stuff. I say, and I just feel like she's using certain people to reach out to other audiences to try to keep her channel alive and her and Keisha, what a better way to, you know, lean on each other to try to, you know, get some traffic to the channel. That's just how I feel. Mm. I feel like it's, this is a way for them to get more people to come and watch their channels because let's be honest, nobody's checking for them. Yeah, well, they both I'm... have declining channels. Um, I don't know what Jayla was on last night, but she was just going off on tangents in the comment section, and it was so distasteful. Mm, she was on that wine. She was um, on. I think she was on one last night. She's like, I'm, I'm winning. I'm winning. Let's like, um, yeah, ah. poor Jayla. Remember, Jayla needs remember to sit you down. Lost your, you were bawling because your ass lost your YouTube channel. Like, yes, what, what's given can be taken away. You better, you better, oh, you better when her fall channel. Back. Yes. When her channel she, came down last year, yes. that was weird. Um, I think it's a great idea that Jayla goes to real estate school. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I think that that was actually kind of wise. Um, and I could see her as being successful in real estate, but you know, you got to pick a side. You can't do everything. And you got to kind of, if you want to do YouTube, do YouTube. If you want to do real estate and kind of make YouTube part of your real estate, but real estate is going to need to be your focus. There is yeah. no point in going to real estate school. And and now you are on a 30-day program with the with with this one. Right. Um, how are you going to have time to do all of it? Yeah. Where was your brooch? Like, why didn't you, like, to me, and look, I don't have a problem with cleavage. I'm just saying, if you're trying to look like you're in business, that is the wrong kind of business. It looks very call girlish. That photo, um, that does not scream to me um, someone who needs help with a YouTube channel. And these are two professional women who are going to help you get to the money. This looks very, um, it's very sexy. And I don't, yeah, it's just kind of like, and it says nothing. And maybe you don't want to promote YouTube, but then you do have a play button there. Like, if you're going to not promote YouTube, then just go ahead and not promote YouTube. But it's just, I don't know, the marketing, whoever came up with this marketing plan, um, I think it's a fail. I just don't. It doesn't say to me winning it doesn't say to me successful it's very like sexy call girlish and i if if i had a daughter who was of the age that needed my money to help her pay to do her youtube like she's 17 or 18 and she loves miss keisha or miss jayla i would be like hell no i i would i i wouldn't I just don't like this marketing strategy. It looks like a modeling competition. And then she said something about a gift of a lifetime. What gift of a lifetime are you guys giving to people? Like you're not even, you're saying that there's going to be some sort of, let's click on, um, let's click on, let's click. My thing is, how are you connecting people to brands when y'all are barely connecting with brands yourselves? Like, yeah. Jayla has barely done anything since that since that very extended Savage X Fenty contract ended, and the girls were tired of that. Yeah, it's we haven't seen that in a minute. Um, that contract finally ended. Thank God. Well, I that and that like channel, she, she has, hasn't like, posted content on it. How are you going to? You've got three. You've got two channels. You've got the one that you're posting your vlogs on, and then you've got the one that you were posting the Fenty content. The content. The you content haven't posted content. anything on that in three or four months. I went over there the other day. There was nothing over there for four months. So you have no other brands that you're doing work with to put on that channel. So now that channel has just been dormant for three months. Like, and that's how you're going to tell people how to be an it girl. Like that doesn't make any sense. Child, she's always gonna wear a blazer with her tits out. That's like her signature business profession. I, I think that's so gross. I don't it's like so that. Tacky. <laughs> so this is what you're gonna get in this mentorship, guys. And just clear your calendar because this is a lot of stuff. How to brand yourself like that it girl on social media in 30 days, creating content that you can that 
you enjoy and your audience absolutely loves. 30 days of proven, time-tested Instagram. So now it's Instagram content ideas for massive growth. 30 days of strategic YouTube content ideas to get more likes, comments, shares, and subscribes. Downloadable worksheets and calendars with actionable steps to keep you on track. Our hand-picked, deeply researched hashtags for ultimate exposure and faster growth. Ta so why aren't they using it? Tap into and leverage your personal strategy of posting consistent content and massive for and massive growth. Tap okay. into tap into and leverage your personal strategy of posting consistent content and massive growth. That doesn't make sense. Um, but you have a channel with no content for three months. Access to an awesome helping community of like-minded influencers who are in the same boat as you. That's and a wonderful more. way to put it. Wow. Um, and more. So let's let's click again. It just takes you right to the sign up page. Girl, just to check out. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, yeah. $99. There you go. And my let me tell is, you how do you have testimonials and this should this hasn't even started yet, by the way. Right. Mm. From her um master class or whatever the hell that she had. Wow. Yeah, so yeah, that's sorry. I'm sorry, friend. Oh no, um, you're fine. I'm saying, but if you didn't know she did, because as I said, this is literally a regurgitated version of Jayla's YouTube hustle mm -hmm. and the bank on brands thing that she did with her manager who didn't even know what, how to define a niche. This is literally <laughs> girl, <what it> is. <laughs> Brianna Boa. Brianna Boa is the one who, and Brianna Boa partially manages Raven too, but Brianna Boa is the one who basically, because of her, that's so how that's how they fell out. Her uh Jayla and Missy. Brianna put that statement out that when uh Missy did that video and was talking about somebody who was putting statements out that she had to call and tell them that it wasn't a good idea. That was silly Brianna Boa. These people, Jayla girl, it's it's a mess. It's a mess, but I'm glad they're doing it because you know what? It's some it's it's something to talk about. It's very interesting. I love to see I love to see people try, but at the end of the day, these two are trying to do something that I'm not sure is gonna work. I I think that they really, you know, it's unfortunate that um Jayla has something that she was able to do. Maybe it didn't happen the best uh the first time out. But why not do it again yourself and perfect it and bring Keisha on as a contributor rather than a partner? Because Keisha, um, why isn't Keisha doing her own thing? And why is Jeremy selling his T-shirt machine? Did you guys catch that? Oh, my goodness. When I saw that, I was like, because, you know, she has her lady like apparel. So I was like, oh, I guess that business, because, you know, she has several businesses. Mm -hmm. So what, what's going on with that? That's literally the first thing I said. What's going on with that? Because. <laughs> Girl, you know they haven't used that machine in a year. <laughs> when she needed the money to go get her boobs done, like she she hasn't used that. And that's so what, might, might as well sell it. She needs, it's every not time she needs money, she is doing the next like quick get you know quick money grab, and that's just how I feel about this you know class that they're they're having. It's another money grab for them because she needs money to pay for these renovations. Yeah. You know, she got to buy the rest of her floors for her house. So yeah, one of them need But she's money. she's doing laminate floors. Laminate don't isn't it oh. don't it really don't. So who child? I don't even want to talk about the floors. I mean, she should I, I would think she should be okay with the floors. She's not spending top dollar on these floors. So I don't understand why the floors are not done. Let me ask you guys a question. Which is going to end first? Uh, the collab, the friendship, the glow up uh, mentorship program or the Martin Lewis series? Which? Um, so we kind of talked about the collab. You guys are not impressed with the collab. 33% um, are saying the friendship. What do you say? Would you say about the collab? Because it's fake. It doesn't yeah, even fake. feel genuine. It At doesn't all. feel like. It doesn't feel like two people. It's just two people that decide to come together. Okay, I want to do this. Um, it feels forced, kind of like her and Jeremy's relationship. Mm, okay. Mm. So what do you guys think? What's your gut check? Um, Kina, answer first. Tell me what your gut check is 
about the Martin Lewis series? Are you here for it? Are you waiting for episode three? Okay, Are you enjoying so it? My thing with that, I just feel like me personally, I didn't really learn too much more that I didn't already know. But I do feel that Martin is going through telling the story and he's probably going to tell his true feelings about it at the end. The only reason why I say that is because I've noticed Choice starting to comment. And I don't know if anyone knows who Choice TV is, but Choice doesn't. He's not mm -hmm. a fan of Keisha at all. Mm -hmm. And he's made it very clear. I saw so, one comment from him. Um, I haven't seen the other ones. I don't have to go troll through well, and go from, see what I can see. Just based on what I know of Choice and what he said, out, he does not like Keisha. He's made it very mm. clear. He's had a series, like he even made a video on Keisha, you know, calling her out to be a liar, speaking about her and Jer like he does not like her. And just the fact that he commented on that video and him and Martin are best friends. They're not mm -hmm. just like, okay, we YouTube, they're friends in real life. They're bestie, yeah. Best friends. I feel like it's something else to the series that's just my personal opinion i think martin is i think he's playing her i think he's gonna mm. tell the story but then he's really gonna go and tell his opinion at the end because i've noticed he does that a lot with his series like he'll tell the story and then at the end he'll say what he really feels so um okay i'm ready for the britney interview are you guys what are you guys I hoping know. to see what's what do you guys like mm, i hope they show this or that i hope that they because I watched Britney's video after she did the interview with him. I'm hoping that he doesn't cut it and splice it and it's he's transparent. I hope that she was able to actually because she said it before that Keisha told her to to say all these things. And I hope he keeps that in there because Keisha keeps saying, no, I didn't tell her to say that. I didn't tell her to do this. I, she, as my friend, she wanted to defend me. So she said what she wanted mm. to say. I never told her. But I, I wonder if she's got the receipts. Listen, like, hey, girl, so. when are you posting it's your video? A phone call. Girl, oh. Keisha, Keisha, you all need to pack up and leave town because when Brittany drops the receipts of you asking her to do that video and what to say, what not to say, it's it's going to be a bad look. Because but I feel all, like Keisha is so that's, calculated. That's not going to be probably, good. In my opinion, I feel like Keisha is so calculated and so, like, manipulative that she most likely called that girl and told her to say what she needed her to say. She didn't leave any a trail. Yeah. That's just how I feel because she's so Don't sneaky. Don't forget to mention the terminations. Like just yeah. try yeah. to cut poor little Ashley off at the knees. Ashley seems to be so... And I know people like, oh, poor Ashley. Yeah, yeah, you guys are all about the side chick. That's not true to me. I don't care what... A However Ashley fit into the situation, Ashley just comes off as a more sympathetic character in this whole thing you know what i mean ashley never gets too rowdy she seems she tries to not throw people under the bus she wants to tell the truth she wants justice for her son she wants her son to be acknowledged by the father and i respect that you know it, like people can see it however they want to see it you know that the relationship with her and Jeremy. Jeremy's no damn prize. But at the end of the day, I think that Ashley does deserve some sympathy because honestly, I do feel like she got played. She got used by this guy. This guy used her up because because he wanted, you know, he for whatever reason, he wanted to date her, screw her, whatever. And he I kind of felt bad for her. I think she, she caught some feelings and uh, I feel bad for her because she seems she seemed very sweet, you know. Um, I don't know. I, I I like Ashley. I'm, you know, if, if I had to pick a side, I would say I'm Team Ashley. Not, you know, and yeah, that's just how I feel. I I like her. I like how she has kind of managed herself throughout this whole thing. She dips in. She says what she needs to say, and she, she dips reads. out exactly. And she doesn't drag it out. She's not trying to, you know fuss about everything every other night she you know she comes and she goes and I really you know I can respect that especially being in a position like her where she does have this man's son and she does have to deal with him you know yeah and I also feel like because I, I like Ashley too I think she has 
a good spirit about her. Um, her aura is just positive. And um, I could see why her and old boy clicked because she seems like a cool chick. And he even said it when Keisha was asking him questions, trying to get him to answer it differently. He kept saying he liked her. Yeah, I liked her. So mm -hmm. I could see why he liked her. Her energy seems very positive, but I feel like he played the both of them and he's still playing Keisha and she's an idiot. Like, that's just how I feel. I feel like Jeremy knows what he's doing. He's using Keisha and she's allowing that. I don't even think he's playing her. I think he told her what, exactly what it is and she's in denial because she did say this like January when um, Ashley had dropped the receipts that you know, a lot of the messages kind of threw her off guard and that Jeremy had said that he didn't want to do this, but she just kept trying to work it out. I feel like Jeremy has told and shown her exactly who he is and what he wants to do, and she just wants to go with the fairy tale in her head. Hence why I said she needs help. Wow. <laughs> That's um crazy. Yeah, I mean, do you think it's just that she is grasping at straws and thinking that she's trying to actually make does she do you think she actually thinks she has a real relationship because yep. she made babies with yeah. him? Or do you think that she is um just I don't even want to say delusional? Like, is she trying to make look, is she trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents? Like he is just a dusty that won't cooperate. Or do you think that this was a manufactured relationship with a Dusty who does not want to cooperate? Someone's phone needs to go on. Are you listening um, without headphones? Someone's not listening with headphones because it the feedback is coming through, I think. I'm not sure which one of you it is. Um, let me let me mute, guys. Whoever's going to go first. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe it was um, Breezes. What do you think? So what do you think, um, Kina? You have to take yourself off mute. Um, is he, is he a bum, a bum Dusty that she's trying to make into a daddy or a zaddy, or is he someone who she really is trying to make a relationship work that she basically was paying to be a boyfriend? Like I hope I'm saying that right. No, like, I feel like I feel like Jeremy has. Let me let me gather my words because I don't want to get because like was he was he someone you were she was really vibing with or okay. is he someone that she could vibe with but I hired him because the people keep saying he hired who's hired as an actor I don't so I don't did he come that. over to be your boo or did he come over to play your boo and you guys fooled around ended up in the bed maybe because I find it hard to believe that she spread that. for three kids I don't think that what I think is because like I said I I watched Keisha I was watching her for a while I actually kind of liked her at first so and I watched their relationship from the beginning and at first I thought I'm like oh, okay she seems to be happy like they they seem to be vibing like he seemed to be really into her but then again, it's like, is he really into her or is he into the things that she's giving him? Because let's not forget, she bought him 25 gifts for his 25th birthday. So it's kind of like, okay, was he really into her or was he really into everything that she was providing for him? So, but I do feel like there had to be some sort of a connection there for them to get to where they're at now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't see myself being a, I'm a married woman. I don't see myself being with a man, laying down with a man, having babies with him. If there's not some love there, at least on my end, I don't know as far as Jeremy, if he, I feel like he does have feelings for her. I, I do, but I don't think he knows how to be faithful. I don't think he knows how to be a man. I don't think he knows how to provide. I don't think he knows I don't think he, I, I just don't think he was ready. I think it was rushed because they were together less than a year. She got pregnant, had the miscarriage and then got pregnant again. Like you guys didn't, they didn't have enough time to truly learn each other, to truly fall in love with each other. You know what I'm saying? Like they never yeah. really got to really know who each other was. He it's like a, it's a business arrangement. And right. He fell in love with what Keisha was providing him. He fell in love with the gifts the stability because he went from college living with his mama to living with Keisha. If we really want to keep it a bug. Yeah. So 
that's just how I feel. It, it, it probably started off as, okay, yeah, we dating, but it eventually turned into, okay, this is a business now. That's mm-hmm. my opinion. Wow. What do you think, Breezes? Um, I think he he might have been into her at some point, but um, like um, can't pronounce her name. Has said he got blinded by everything that came that Keisha just gave him. He was fresh out of college. He did not get into the league like he thought he would. But you come back to Atlanta now. Here comes Keisha, basically giving you everything: access to a car, um, being in a nice apartment. Um, and just giving him everything and he didn't have to work for anything. No, I think at this point he probably wants to back out, but no, you got three kids. Um, your name is probably attached to a few things and he doesn't want to leave. And then on top of that, Keisha probably just still allows him to do whatever anyway. So he's like, I don't have to actually work for anything. So why not? Keisha probably has adopted... You know, ladies, these if they're if you're friends with someone who believes that all men cheat, um, run. I mean, doesn't mean they can't be your friend, but all men don't cheat, okay? And but if you allow your man to go out on dates and you have a man who still wants to go out with his friends who are single and go out for drinks and go out to bars, that you could have a relationship that ends up in trouble. A man who is committed to you, not saying that you guys are not going to have a social life and he's not going to do things anymore, but the the type of things that put your relationship at risk and make you feel uncomfortable, a man who is committed to you is not going to have you out here feeling unsure about how he really feels. And I think that Keisha is probably okay with fe- not feeling okay all the time. I think she has adapted to his poor behavior as a man and thinks that um, it is okay for your man to put you in positions where you feel uncomfortable. And no man who really cares about you and loves you wants you to feel uncomfortable um, for many reasons, but the main reason should be because he loves you. you know what I mean? Like it's just, it doesn't mean he won't ever go out with his buddies or go to a bachelor party or things like that. But when you've got someone that you can trust, um, you know that they're going to handle themselves accordingly. You don't have to worry. You know what I mean? Like I I've been live with you guys. My husband just went out. Um, I mean, he went out with my daughter, but at the end of the day, he was going by himself for a minute. And at the end, like I was on here on live, you know what I'm saying? Like you can live your life and take a breath. Like everything doesn't have to be almost like an anxiety attack. Like, um, the other night it was thought that maybe Chris, you know, my jazzy life's boyfriend went out. That's why she was looking mad because like, you don't have to be mad when your man steps out, when you've got a man who's trustworthy, that's my point. Okay. So, um, And I hope, I wish that for all of you, anybody who's listening to this at any point, that you get to that point in a relationship that does not exist for everybody. And I feel like if Keisha is of that quality, that she has resigned herself to thinking that that is what relationships are like. You know what I mean? Like if your mom had a man who cheated on her the whole marriage and she told you that that's just life girl and that's how it is and just find keep yourself busy and you'll learn to get through it then there are women out here who do become accustomed to that and that's not that's not good you know what i mean that's that's not good you are worthy to have a man all to yourself and someone who is not going to cheat on you um so it's just unfortunate i feel like if she has settled in that type of lifestyle that's that's probably what she comes from that type of philosophy that no every man's gonna cheat and just go ahead and and just try to make sure that you stay top bitch right now i have a question for y'all um so because i've noticed that she does make a lot of excuses for him she's always coming to his defense and we all know that he really rarely says anything in her defense have you guys noticed recently her videos where she's trying to portray him as this involved father like he's bonding with the girls she's posting on her instagram him allegedly bonding with the girls to me my opinion this is just my opinion it seems forced it doesn't seem genuine it like 
I, I watched that video and I cringed because I'm just like, the girls don't even look like they really F with him like that. It just didn't seem genuine to me. So no, she was responding to LSA. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I was confused because I'm like, why all of a sudden now Jeremy is doing spa day with the girls? Why all of a sudden now? It, it just made no sense. I was confused. I'm like, that's we like, what? I didn't know what was so, going on. For, for one, everyone has always said that they don't see Jeremy and the youngest one together. And even Jeremy, in that video, exactly. video with him and her, she was just kind of looking there like, Ma, where are you? Because... And it's not because it's not a it's not a situation where like kids is just like I would rather be with my mom. It's more like I don't know who this person is. Mm. They, uh, like girls are normally like daddy's girls. Exactly. They don't strike me as kids it's that very are, strange. It's that very are, strange. Are daddy's girls at all? They just see they seem like oh we see him come and go. He might interact with them here and there, but it's not like a. A genuine the most like we've ever seen Jeremy like interacted was that time when he had August and all three of them together and they went to the park and he was kind of more intriguing with what August was doing in the park than all three of them. Yeah. yeah. It was very strange. Mm. And then like I said, I cringed watching it. And also for me personally, like I'm not on YouTube. I watch YouTube. I'm not a YouTuber. I, I, I'm a regular person. I work a regular job. You know, I do what I do. Me personally, I don't tell people how to raise their children. I don't tell people how to raise their kids. However, for her to continue to say how her children are bullied and her children are this, I don't understand why you continue to put them on your channel. Like they have their own channel where you can't comment. You can't have the disgusting things that people are saying about them allegedly. I I'm, I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's fake. But why would you continue to put them on your channel and then you're hashtagging like you know? It's the hashtags for me. That makes no I, sense. That that I aggravates me because I, I, also, I feel also, like that's just very me. irresponsible. It upsets me. I don't also, understand why if, you would associate your children with that. Also, if you're, if you're tired of people quote unquote bullying your kids, you would also present them better. Like they're in PJs all the time. Right. Their hair is never like you might see them get their hair done now, and you're like, wow, and they'll have that same hairstyle for a month and a half. Yeah, it's yeah. horrible. It's bad. I just feel, I honestly like just watching her is just sad. And like I said, I'm sick of her. I'm really am. I'm sick of it. Like it's mm. she needs help. It's frustrating. It's yeah. very frustrating because it's like. If someone voices their opinion about her, oh, we're trolls, we're haters, we're this, we're that. No, some of us are genuinely concerned. Something is wrong with her. Like she needs help. She does not, in my opinion, she does not have real people in her life that will sit her down and say, girl, listen, what you're doing is not right. You need to figure this out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that girls like us that she had, the only person that I felt like was potentially real was... Uh, Asia, whatever her name is, she was the only one that I felt like would probably tell Keisha, like, we're, like why are you still with him? Or why are you still dealing with this? Why are you still... You, it just made no sense to me. I feel like she doesn't have any genuine people around her. And it's it's sad. And her but also, she people. says she's a know-it-all. So I feel like even if they were going to tell her, um, she wouldn't listen or she would just think, you know... I felt like one, the only friend that really knew the extent of like how bad her relationship was was Britt, and the only reason why Britt knew is because Britt saw them. Right, mm. bad. If if Britt didn't see them, Britt wouldn't know shit. Well, <laughs> but it's possible the friends know because they live in Atlanta, and Atlanta is a small pond, yeah. and a lot of people are traveling in the same circles, or you know the circles intersect. And people know what's going on with your man. It's not all about just because of the social media thing. Um, these people are in some of these same, just like how Ashley ended up at that uh, filming of the video and didn't know that Jeremy was going to be there. I mean, it's, it's Atlanta, but at the end of the day, it's a very small circle of people and they seem to all interact with each other. Um, I just think I, I know it does frustrate people. And you know what? Sometimes there's just going to be shows that take a turn and you're just not going to like how it goes. And I get it. So she's an interesting character type. She's a complicated, um, silly type person that she's kind of fun to laugh at. She's fun to figure out the lies. 
I mean, it's interesting that her and Jayla have found their way back to each other. Maybe they're just going to be partner in in drama crime. You know what I mean? Because we know Jayla is not above some drama. We know Keisha is not above some drama. So maybe this was a good idea. We were sitting here for two hours. We had a long conversation about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is good for business. There are people who registered for this class tonight. And I wish them good luck. If somebody has registered and they want to come voice, uh, it was great or it sucked. You guys are welcome to come here and talk about it. I'd love to hear. But yeah, the whole thing with um, Keisha and the trolls or Keisha and the bullying. Um, I haven't heard a lot of her talk about the bullying, this anti-bullying campaign. Because it's fake. Um, because yeah, it's that's, dead. That's <laughs> quieted <laughs> down a little bit. Um but I just honestly, me personally, uh, the Keisha trolls that come through, I just ignore them. I'm, you know, there's there's nobody who has a right to tell me what kind of content I can do and that I'm actually going to listen. So um, I just ignore them. They just get blocked when they come through. No like one, her, nobody's stopping nothing. <laughs> the whole anti-bullying thing, I like because when Martin did his live, I was in there asking him questions like, OK, so are we going to address everybody's part, not just what Paris or this person said that, are we going to talk about D? Are we going to talk about Keisha continually, you know, she continues to misgender pair. Are we going to address that? And he said, yes, he said he's going to address everything. So that's mm. why I feel like he's going to tell the story and he's going to say what he needs to say. Why do you think Martin took, I mean, anyone can take down their live, but why do you think Martin took that live down? See, I don't, I didn't know he took it down. I thought he, and initially, I thought he took it down maybe to monetize it or, but he yeah, never, that's what it I back thought, up. But never came back up. Yeah. I got a little bit of it and I put it in a video, the comments. Um, I saw a good because portion the comments of it. Was crazy. Them comments was crazy. I'm not even going to hold you. Them comments it was, was crazy. yeah, it was, it was interesting. Um, I wonder why he didn't. So he did the first after show and that was a premiere. And then he did the after show and he did it in a live format and the video never came back. I guess we just know now next time he goes live, y'all have recording. your, have your yeah. guests. Girl, everybody starts screen recording. <laughs> Cause I didn't so, now maybe because the comments were, it was getting kind of tense in there and it was getting a little rowdy. So maybe that's why. I don't know. Yeah, it was it was interesting. I did like though how he answered. He would read questions. He was he was answering lots of questions. I thought that was good. I I enjoyed that format. Um, just to get a lot of questions out, just reading people's comments and keep going. I mean, of course, there's always going to be people in there to act silly, but you know, to me, the main thing to do is to not even focus on them because they're trolls. You know. The people who feel like you have to insult people because now you're mad because they're saying something you don't like, those are people really, like, you just have to ignore them. Yeah. You just have to ignore them and not let them, like, interrupt your experience, you know? Um, did she mean to uh, address D as... I yes, I asked him if he was going oh. to speak on Meek Mob. Um, okay. And her bullying and doxing and all the disgusting things that she continues to do on YouTube. I did. I asked him and he said, yes, he's going to address everything. Wow. Is, so she's still up to those shenanigans? Cause yes, I don't even, she still has not I, stopped to this day. Okay. I and don't even. Is, I reported I don't her even. so many times. I don't understand why she's still on YouTube. I don't get it. Ashley lives uh, in her head rent free, bro. Like literally Ashley does nothing, and this girl will make a video about her. Ashley and could breathe, and she makes a video. It's about It's disgusting. Her. The the like I when I tell you I report reported her video so many times. It's disgusting. Mm. Some of the things like the most recent that I saw was because I know Ashley had something with a photographer. I don't know what happened. I know she posted something on her Instagram. I don't know if he took advantage of her. I don't know the full story. But me personally, yeah. I don't care if I don't like you. I don't care if I, I'm not. We're at the end of the day. I'm not going to tell another woman that what they experience is a lie because I wasn't there. She's posting videos talking about, oh, Ashley's a liar. The this, that, and the third, like lying about the photographer taking advantage of her, like all these disgusting things. And I'm just like, are you not a woman? Like, do you, 
I just, I, I just can't get, I can't rock behind. I just don't understand. I don't get it. And I'm like, you like, you dislike this girl based off of you being someone's employee. So you're going to say mm -hmm. whatever you want to say to discredit her. That makes no sense to me. Well, you know, um, look, I think that uh, anything to continue to discredit and disrupt, that's what trolls do. You know what I mean? You got to look at it. Discredit, disrupt, um, distract, all of those things. That's what uh, a lot of the people that support Keisha who have platforms do. And I don't expect them to do any different. You know what I mean? So I don't even I don't even go over there. Guys, you know my policy. Reaction yeah, videos um are not for you. They are, you know, if they are um if people are talking about you, I don't check in. Like if, if someone's somewhere checking on me, I'm not going over there to go watch. You know what I mean? Um, someone's asking what where are her Spellman sisters? Where do you guys think that her Spellman cohorts are? Is no one supporting Keisha or nobody wants to be part of the shit show? Apparently the girl from Key Cosmetics, um, Key Essentials, sorry, is a Spellmanite. I think Keisha has also mentioned a friend that lives in Miami, Becca, that she says is her best friend. She and has so many best friends. Well. I can't keep track. Yeah, that too. But um, th I think that was the friend that was at her house, um, at her apartment when they, when Jeremy told Ashley to come over, and nobody knew until she was downstairs. Um, but she would have fallen on probably. I know she used to have this girl. Um, what's her name? Reed that used to defend her from time to time. We haven't seen or heard anything from her. I don't know if Unique went to Spellman, but y'all know they already they fell out. So, so uh, my thing, my question is, okay, if if you have multiple, like me, I have a lot of friends, but the people that I'm, my core friends that I've been friends with for years, went to college with, we're still close. If you're constantly falling out with people, who's the problem? Who where who where does the issue lie? When do you say to yourself, okay, maybe it's me. Maybe I need to reevaluate myself. And the way I interact with people or whatever the case may be. Because she acts like she doesn't like drama. She's not into drama. Like she's so positive and such a great person. But you're constantly falling out with people. How does that work? Well, her and Jayla have that same issue. They lack self-awareness. Because according to Jayla, everybody else is the problem but her. And that's why they are a great fit. But yeah, they, yeah they can someone, they can have said, a meeting of the minds. Or less the same people. They are. The <laughs> Let me ask you guys this. Uh someone is putting up on the on the thing key essentials. Baby, you putting up the AC holder? Oh, okay. Um key essentials threatened to sue someone because they said they didn't want to support the business. What does that mean? So someone had sent her um a dm that said you know this is the person you're supporting blah 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 because you know keisha is a ambassador in quotes um and the response to the email was that they're she she's acquired the person's ip address and they were sending it over to the da and i'm like yep to do what she she hit up Keisha, and this was the copy and paste. Because y'all know that's Keisha's favorite response is that she got your IP address, and she is about to report your ass. And I'm like, for, for what? what? Because for they what? don't want to support. So because someone wrote a note stating that they don't look. First of all, I who is Key? First of all, what is Key Cosmetics? I, I no one has even heard of this brand. There, I would never put some random ass makeup on my face. I don't even know this brand, and who cares? Like, the, I'm sure whoever wrote that note doesn't even have a key lip gloss. Like, I, I mean, I get sending a note and trying to ring the alarm on who your brand ambassadors is, but as far as supporting the brand, um. If you don't support, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I guess it's one of those things. If you don't support Keisha, why would you, why, I mean, the assumption would be that something that she supports or likes, you probably wouldn't have any interest in anyway. Like, it's not 
going to be a, I don't support key cosmetics. It's just going to be, I've, I don't even know that brand. I don't even know what y'all do over there. I'm not interested. So that's, that's sue me worthy. Like now I get to be sued because I don't even know what you guys do over there. I don't even know if you have foundation. All I see is Keisha in mismatch foundation all the time. So any rake makeup in, recommendations in from her, I would not take edited it. photos. But no, yeah. I, would never, I would never take a makeup recommendation from that woman. She can't provide me anything. So if it's I don't even know what she's wearing. So that's that's a problem. Key cosmetics needs to take up with her because a girl also I, would think I she, feel like yeah. they don't have a legitimate like ambassadorship because literally the day after she announced that Keisha is the brand ambassador Keisha no does a video with um NYX Cosmetics I to say she's a, the partner I'm like nah she just she so she just hit you up and be like you know I can be your ambassador I'm a social media influencer and you're like go ahead my Spellman sister but you don't have a legitimate contract so no. you can't tell her that she can't promote another makeup brand while she's your brand I mean ambassador. I think the <laughs> smart thing would have been this is what I think um I I don't know this brand but it, this is you know I think it would have been really smart that the fact that you call it key which I think the key stands for some names or something of the woman, you know, I, I mean, I think they should have gone in a, with a more deeper contract with her and tried to promote it as if, you know, and, and made her some sort of, you know, give her a little 5% or something, 10% to where the key is like Keisha and uh, she can promote it as something that uh, she's now partnering with. Rather than just a brand ambassador, brand ambassador is someone who is just basically paid to promote your product on a regular basis. Do like some get ready with me's and all that kind of stuff. Maybe it's just some sort of a six month marketing deal. I don't know, but as far as I'm concerned, I like doing business with an off brand, uh, you know, something that nobody knows about. Girl, I still don't know about it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, it, it it's making me mention something I didn't know about, but it's still not making me go to the, like the website and go check out and see what the offerings are. I really don't care. Yeah. It, it gives you, it, it's awareness, but you don't, you're not converted to consideration. Like, Oh my God, like, let me go check out your lip Right. Gloss. If you, if you want to make a name for yourself as not a known like brand that people find in Ulta or Sephora or Walmart or at a department store or whatever the case might be. Um, you need to be on Instagram every time I flip through my feed. Like when I see Il Maquillage, Il Maquillage is not even a name, but they've made a name for themselves as that foundation that makes your face, your face look flawless. Um, I, I've never seen them anywhere, but on Instagram, and, you know, I'm aware of that brand. Like, they've really given some brand awareness, but I've never even ventured to purchase it. But this company, if they think working with uh, Keisha Kaylee is going to help things, good luck. <laughs> good luck with that, because I, I don't know. I mean, we're just going to see. I just thought it was interesting that the KEE -E was reminiscent of her name, and I think that that was kind of a good catch. But making her just a brand ambassador, someone who gets PR and gets some free makeup, that's not really hitting on a lot. Keisha didn't even do a giveaway. No. Nope. Like, she got a big box of makeup and didn't even offer to do a giveaway. Not that she has to give away her makeup, but more so that Key would have sent her enough to do a giveaway as their brand ambassador that basically kind of has a little bit of their same name. The one when she did that, sorry, when she did that, get ready with me, that incomplete, get ready with me, that she couldn't even sell the products properly to say, oh my God, guys, this this oxidizes really fast, or just whatever. She couldn't even sell the products in the tutorial. She didn't even complete the tutorial for you to see what the finished look would look like. I'm like. So you just threw this together just to say you did a content piece, but it was never properly done, which I'm not surprised. It's Keisha. She she, right. she never does anything right. 
So interesting, ladies. Guys, you guys were some great co-hosts tonight. Thank you so much for coming through. I think I'm going to, I mean, I think we kind of covered everything, did we? We covered the class. We covered Keisha. We covered Jayla. We covered Keisha and Jayla. Um, we, covered we covered a little bit Martin. of Martin. Um, so we covered the collab, the friendship, Martin, and um, and what? The collab, Martin, and the friendship. So, yeah, four things. We covered everything. So I don't know. Is there anything that we left out, guys? Do you guys have any other questions for me? No, I think we covered no. a lot. I think we covered part. a lot. Yeah. Okay. Well, this was fun. You guys have to call in again. I really appreciate you both. And, um, you know, let me know. I mean, hopefully if, if someone's out there, Martin, if you're out there, when are you dropping episode three? That's what we want to know. Okay. I thought he said um, it'll drop tomorrow, allegedly. I, he, ooh, okay, good. That's what he good. said, but I don't know Martin, how Martin does, so. Good. I will be waiting to see because that should be interesting. I'm just I'm also waiting to hear from people um about the class, about this mentorship, um, and everything else that she says she's got going on. She's like the Phaedra Parks of the YouTube streets. Like, remember how Phaedra used to be like, I've me and Apollo, we have businesses, this, 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 this. and when her right. Apollo broke up, I mean, that was just a mess. Anyway, guys, thank you so much, uh, Breezes and Kina. I, I appreciate both of you so much. Thank you for coming through, ladies. Oh, thank you for having me. Right, thank you, guys. Enjoy okay. the evening. Okay. So much fun. Okay, thank you. Take care, guys. You too. Bye. Okay, bye, ladies. Bye-bye. Bye, Kina. Okay. Guys, that was so much fun. Hey, Amber. Dr. A. Hey, boo-boo. Um, he says he's dropping the video tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. All of you who, um, stayed in this whole time, you're amazing. And those of you guys who dipped and came back, you guys are amazing too. And thank you to the wonderful callers. They were so nice, right? Guys, you know, we're going to do this again. Her zone Inc. How are you? Keisha is doing high school brand ambassador work. Absolutely. It's like, she's wearing a sash. It's like she is on the homecoming committee, right? She's doing homecoming committee. Yes, it's a prom giveaway. Yes, that's what she's doing. Yes. Okay. Guys, look. All we can do, let's just keep watching the episodes and just keep talking about it. We're going to share our opinion. We're going to uh, sum it all up. Right, Taishari? Yes. Absolutely. Guys, I hope that um, if you are not subscribed here, make sure hit the subscribe button for me. Make sure also hit the like button, please. I really appreciate it. You guys hanging out with me tonight was so much fun. And of course, you know, we're going to do it again. And if Martin drops that video early enough, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about it. If not, we'll end up talking about it on Monday. Okay. Um, but yeah, if he drops the video, y'all, you already know. You already know, like big Frida. Uh, you already know I will definitely be covering it, right? And um, we'll see what's going on. But yeah, I want to see the Britney, the Britney Marshall. Now, if you guys have a link to the video where Britney talked about her interview with Martin, can you guys drop that for me in Instagram? Let me know because I didn't watch it. I mean, I'm subscribed to her channel, but I don't hit them up every day. And I did not hear like the snippet of when she talked about stuff. Cause you know, Brittany, she'll, she have hour long video and she will be way in the middle somewhere towards the end, uh, mentioning something. So if you guys know where that is, know where I can find it, I would certainly appreciate it. Okay guys. Um, so yeah, hit me up in Instagram with that information. If you don't mind. Anyway, I think I'm going to go ahead and we will go ahead and, back up on out of here let me see where we are get back to so i can drop this outro okay guys take care have a good evening and i'll see you guys tomorrow okay Welcome back to Love, Lies, and Lace Friends, where we do reactions, reviews, and commentary on the YouTube channels you love to watch. 
Guys, are you subscribed to this channel? If you're not, you need to be. Hit your notification bell so you can be notified when I upload a video, when I go live and drop another video for you. Also, follow me on Instagram. That way you can keep up with what I'm doing, okay? If you enjoy channels like this and commentary, consider becoming a member. Otherwise, guys, bougie gang gang, it's an open thing. Make sure that you are subscribed to this channel so you can participate in the chats. And I will see you next time I hit that live button. Okay, take care. Bye. Hey guys, how are you? being on my page, bitch, because I ain't got nothing for you nothing-ass bitches. <laughs> <laughs>